Hi, and welcome back to Home Shop. We have an interesting one today. I have this old VHS DVD uh, player, converter, recorder. Uh, I've had this thing for a while. It's served me well over the years, transferring old VHS tapes to DVD or just playing them. Uh, it's really old technology at this point because not only do we not find VHS tapes anymore, but DVD is not something that we use much either. It's still useful to me though, because every once in a while I'll run across some kind of old VHS tape that's got something useful on it. And maybe it's an old home movie, something like that. And we wanna transfer it to something more digital that is gonna last longer. I went to go use it the other day and it stopped working. As a matter of fact, it won't turn on. So the lights on the front here, I'll plug it in for you in a second. They just turn on, off, on, off, on, off, and it never, completely boots up. I have some ideas about what that might be. I did some searching on YouTube to try to figure that out, but I am not an expert at all. As you probably are aware, if you watched the last video, I just kind of bumble my way through things and see how it turns out. So we'll see if we can get lucky on this one again today. Uh, if you're watching this, then we probably did. Um, and we'll go from there. So let's get into this thing and see what we can figure out on the inside. All right, so here we've got our VCR on the tabletop here, and we're gonna plug it in. What you'll see is it's gonna blink. And I think what those little blinking lights are telling me is actually that it's just not getting through the startup process. It's getting part of the way and then resetting and going back to the start again. So let's take the top off here. We're gonna to have to get at what's underneath here because I think that's where the power supply is. This is the VHS side over here. And you can see the tape goes in right there. And then over here we have the power cord. That leads to the power supply, which is I think where we're probably gonna find our problem because the uh, VCR just seems to not want to turn on all the way. So the board on the top here is the DVD player that you're looking at. So I'm gonna unplug the ribbon cables there and we're gonna take out the four screws that are around the outside edge here. There's actually a fifth screw that's on the back you'll see in a minute. I took it out when I took the cover off because I thought that was part of the cover, but it's not. Uh, so we'll zip these four screws out of here and remove the entire DVD unit real quick. And that fifth screw is right here on the back. So, or was, I pulled that, I pulled that out when I uh, took the case off. Uh, we're just gonna slide the DVD player right on out of here. And I'll take some of the screws out um, that are just hanging out. We'll set those aside. We'll set the whole DVD player unit aside so we can get at the power supply that you can see exposed underneath here. So if we turn this thing around, get the camera positioned a little bit more, you see I'm gonna look at all these parts right here and I'm already starting to see, ooh, there's a, okay, so um, that one right there, uh, that I am automatically suspecting that one. I don't uh, know a lot about electronics, but what I do know is uh, one of these things does not look like the others. And so this is what I'm seeing. The tops of all of those round things, those are called capacitors. I do know a little bit, enough to know that those are all capacitors. And they're not supposed to have the top puffed out on them. So you see the other ones here uh, are flat topped. And here's the, this is the, uh, the fuse here. And that looks fine. And obviously it wouldn't even be blinking if that fuse was bad. So we'll just set that aside for now. Uh, but that resistor, it's puffed up on top and uh, you know, it, it looks like it also has some corrosion almost coming out of it somewhere. I'll, when we pull this out here, I'm gonna unscrew these screws so I can get the whole power supply out and then we'll get up a little bit closer here and see if we can get, get a better view of what this looks like. All right, now that we've got the screws out, 
we're going to just disconnect the ribbon cable that's holding the power supply onto this board next to it. And we're going to set it aside here. Uh, if you look where I'm looking, I don't know if you can see that really well, there is some kind of brown residue on the top, which is definitely suspect here. Uh, in addition to that kind of domed top to it there. So let's set that aside here for a second and see if we can get a better look at some things. I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'll probably just take a look at the numbers on the side of this part, and they're not expensive. They can't be. It's just a cheap little uh, capacitor. So it's 4700, it looks like. I'm just going to run that number on Amazon and see what we find. All right, it's a couple days later. I have successfully located another one of these on Amazon. So today is about removing the old one and putting a new one in. And this is all just going to be trial and error, so we'll see if this fixes it or not. We'll put it back together, and if it works, sweet. Uh, so I think those two right there are going to be the ones we want, just by flipping it over like that. So I mark them with a uh, marker here, so I make sure I get the right connections. We're going to heat those up with the soldering iron here, and I apologize. I know automatically... There is probably all the electronic experts out there on the internet right now. I am probably doing way too many things wrong to even start uh, keeping track. So if you are a person who knows what you're doing, by all means, please tell me what I should have done better so I do better next time. But I am uh, working with what I got here. So I got this crappy soldering iron that was probably two bucks in a like Home Depot at some point. I'm just heating up the solder on the bottom of this thing and my finger on the bottom here, uh, I am just applying some sideways pressure to the, uh, the connection there, the little wire sticking through the hole so that when the solder lets go, it just kind of tips off to the side and then I'll do the same thing to the second wire and we'll have a loose capacitor. So this is, uh, might take a second, this thing is taking a little longer than I thought it was going to, to uh, heat up. And here we go. There we have a, uh, let's get that back in frame. Uh, there we have our capacitor. Pop that out, just set it to the side. And this is the new one, fresh from Amazon. We'll just slide the wires through the holes that we just freed the old capacitor from, flip it back over, and uh, we're going to stick some solder on there, heat it up, and get this one attached in its place. Alright, now all that's left is to trim off the wires. I know, I know, crappy solder job, but you know what? I think it's going to work. Looks like junk, but it's on there. Okay, I mean, maybe I'll clean this one up a little bit. Still looks like junk, but I think that one that one looks a little bit better than it did, right? Just a little bit. All right, just trim off the excess here, and good. That looks good. Let's get this thing uh, installed. See, the top of that looks way different, right? That's how it's supposed to look right there. I think we've made the right decision. Let's get this thing put back into the DVD player. Just slide it right back in where it came from and put the screws back in.
All right, screws are in, ribbon cables reattaching. This is going to go together, I think, pretty quick. Let's grab that DVD player and drop that back into the slot. And then we've got those four screws to stick back in. And done. Let's plug it in. And power. And nothing. Shoot. I completely forgot. Yep, the fuse. That is stupid. And now the fuse is. Uh, supposed to go underneath that board and my fat fingers will not fit. I'm gonna have to take this all apart again. You have got to be kidding me. Alright, fuse in place. Okay, put it back together again. Okay, now try it one more time. Let's plug this back in. And ta-da! All right, I think we got it. There is, oh, power. The lights stay on. Yeah, it says load on the screen. Open, and the door opens. I think we got it. Ladies and gentlemen, my uh, capacitor guessing game was successful. We have fixed the DVD player. Mission accomplished. Well, shocking as it may seem, it actually worked. Feel free to follow along if you'd like to continue watching me bumble through fixing random things, or hey, maybe next time I might actually build something instead of just trying to fix something that broke. See you next time on Home Track.